active clients, and with these additional 100 bins, we will be able to expand the program even further. Clients say to me on almost a daily basis, um, things like, this is a lifesaver, uh, I don't know what I would do without your... A, a few exciting things to get through tonight and some public hearings, but we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance, so if you'll stand and join us. Okay, uh, we are going to review a few standards of conduct because we have a few public hearings tonight. We want to make everyone feel welcome being here and giving comments if they want to. Uh, you'll have two minutes to get to address the council on anything that you are here to talk about. We ask that people respect each other by not cheering, jeering, clapping, booing or responding in any kind of visible or audible way to other people's comments so that everyone can feel welcome. Um, please help us take care of this historic meeting room by not standing on any of the furniture or leaning on any of the, the artwork in the building. If you have a sign, a prop, or other piece of equipment, uh, please make sure it doesn't cause disruption or block anybody's view. And please don't approach the dais during the meeting. If you have anything, a paper, or anything that you want to distribute to the council, uh, you can hand it to one of our staff members. Will you raise your hands right now? And they will distribute it to us. Our staff is here to help you. So if you have any questions about anything along the way, raise your hand. They'll come to you and um, answer your questions or connect you with someone who can. Because this isn't a, a back and forth dialogue in the public comment section, the council doesn't respond to questions in this format, although there's a lot of ways that we do, and we can connect you with that. Um, we realize that two minutes might not be enough time to get out all of your thoughts, and like I said, we have many other ways that we can receive your comments, written, phone calls, um, and our staff people can help you connect if you don't feel like you have enough time in two minutes to speak. So, that being said, we're not going to have a public hearing next, but we're going to, uh, <clears throat> as the council and Salt Lake City Fire Department, recognize the department's new cadets who will be officially sworn in on September 21st this year. Also receiving a recognition will be community members whose selfless actions made a difference in the lives of others. And I would like to invite Chief Brian Dale to come forward. Thank you, Chief. You know, thank you very much, council members. For the last couple of years, the fire department has set uh, some fairly strict guidelines or standards on how we recognize, whether it be our firefighters for doing something or members of the public or our partners, such as Gold Cross or Dispatch or Police. Um, this evening, we have two citizen awards. Uh, the first one um, happened on uh, March 3rd at 8.45 p.m. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Robert Carlson was in his home and he heard someone screaming outside. He went outside and found his neighbor standing on her porch and she had burns on her hands and her face. He gets her off the porch, takes her to his home, and then he asks where her grandmother is and she's still inside the home. He goes back inside the home that's on fire and finds the grandmother who's on the couch, just sitting there and can't get up on her own. And he was able to get her up and get her out of the home and just moments before her firefighters arrived. And you know, people ask us all the time, well, is it okay if I do that? We can't tell you to put your lives unnecessarily at risk. And obviously we have a lot of training to do that, but this gentleman took his own uh, safety aside and made a good decision and able to get her out and probably change the outcome for her on that day. So we are awarding him the uh, Citizens Heroism Medal. Why do you wanna come up? If you'll stay up, actually, could we um, offer to get a picture with uh, Chief of Staff Patrick Leary and um, I know Council Chair 
Uh, James Rogers isn't able to be here tonight, but our, our vice chair and I would love to come down and, and get sure. a picture with you, yeah, if you don't sure. mind. Thank you. The other award uh, we're receiving tonight is a citizen uh, commendation, which happened on February 18th. We have a young gentleman who's a sophomore, and he was in his home and heard someone screaming again, and he goes outside to find uh, a gentleman who is in complete cardiac arrest. And uh, he told me this evening as I met him that he is a lifeguard or was a lifeguard for Twin Peaks, and, or Seven Peaks, sorry, and he started doing CPR, able to do a good effective CPR until our paramedics arrived and without prompting or training other than what he had received. And not many kids would probably do that without any kind of prompting or go do this or go do that. He did it on his own, uh, did a very good job. The rescue crews arrived, so he was doing very good CPR when they arrived. So we're giving, uh, and his name, sorry, is Dylan Garcia. Dylan, you wanna come on up? since I'm hogging the microphone this evening for longer than two minutes, but this council and the mayor's office provided the fire department the challenge and provided us the funding to increase our diversity and our outreach to our youth. And tonight, I'm very happy to introduce to you to the nine members of the cadet planning committee. These young people have done a lot of work in a very short period of time. Uh, you'll notice they already have uniforms. And they have all sorts of things are going on I'm gonna have our firefighter specialist, Susie, uh, talk, Susie Alley talk to you guys a little bit about it. And you'll also be introduced to the lead person in this, uh, young lady with the name of Hannah. She'll talk to you a little bit. But we wanted you to kind of get a feel for what you um, purchased, if you will, some years ago when you gave us that money. And the thing is for us, is that you gave us the money even though money was tight. You found it for us under the challenge of increasing the diversity and increasing our outreach. And the council already knows this, but we had our latest recruit camp start uh, last Monday, and 34% of the people, of the 13 individuals in this recruit class are either female or people of color. So I think we're getting a lot farther than I thought we could in a short period of time, and your support and your funding of the programs have done a lot to do that. So rather than having me stand up here, I'd like to have uh, Specialist Susie Alley and the cadets come on up. they're coming up, you see the uniform. The one thing you do not see on the uniform, you don't see a badge. In the fire service, as you guys know, the, the badging of a firefighter is a very big deal. They don't get badged till tomorrow. Even though I want them to wear their badges tonight, we're not going to put their badges on them till tomorrow. 
And so what you're seeing is the uniform that they helped design with the new patch. And then tomorrow night, they'll receive their badge. Also, they'll have their own helmet, different color, yellow with the, with the black front and the yellow stuff on there. They'll be able to have their own turnouts. They'll not be the full turnouts that our firefighters wear, but a modification of that as well. Um, and we're learning along the way. Um, Detective uh, Cody Logie, Logie has helped us with this from the police department. They've been more than helpful getting us up on our feet, telling us kind of things that they have learned. And several of the cadets are also police explorers as well. So we're having, there's a good partnership right now between police and fire in this initiative. And I'm very proud to be able to present to you the nine members of the uh, fire department cadet leader program. Madam Chair, may, may I have a point of personal privilege before yes. we hear about them? Um, I am really delighted to see that the majority are young ladies. With, we're, we're appreciative of the young men who are here, but Council Member Mendenhall and I both talked to the Chief about the importance of recruiting able young women to serve, and we are delighted that you are part of this team. It's just great to see. I'll second that. Go ahead, Susie. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the members of the City Council for having us here tonight. For the past two months, I've had the pleasure to work with this outstanding group of young citizens. As the department began planning for a cadet post, these kids approached us wanting to be members and wanting to be involved as soon as possible. The idea was presented to form a cadet post planning committee to utilize the ideas and gain insights of the kids. Each of the committee members before you has volunteered to be involved in the planning stages of this project. Over the last nine meetings, these members have been very busy and have reached many goals, one of which was to draft their own oath of office and their own code of conduct. These soon-to-be cadets realize the value of commitment and hold high the promise that they will make. This was made apparent in the language that they have chosen for their oath and their code of conduct. Phrases such as conduct myself with strength, courtesy, and integrity, and strive to put others first, be respectful and kind, and to honor and respect the community speak to their character. The cadets will be an asset to our fire department, and they'll be an asset to Salt Lake City. It's been very important that the committee and the cadet post be peer-led. Our goal has been to allow these members to have a voice in their own organization. The committee elected Hannah Lingle to serve as the chair, and I'd like to invite her to speak on behalf of the committee. Good evening, members of the council. My name is Hannah Lingle, and I am the chair of the Salt Lake City Fire Department's cadet post. The fire cadet post has a lot to offer to the, Salt, to the youth of Salt Lake City. This program allows us the opportunity to experience the job of a firefighter, gives us a place to mature and learn good values, provides a way to connect to the community, and helps us narrow down our career options for the future. Throughout the process of building this program with my fellow cadets and advisors, we have designed it to be very close to the workings of the fire department, with some exceptions. We have created our own oath of office, values, code of conduct, motto, and charter. We have already started to be a part of the community by creating a fun, yet informational game for young kids to play at outreach events. This game was also made bilingual due to the diversity of our community. So the kids of Salt Lake that speak and read Spanish can enjoy the game just as much. Additionally, we are actively recruiting our members of the committee, of the community who want to be a cadet. We look forward to increasing our ranks and providing opportunity to our peers. Our post would not be here today if it weren't for the help of some very special people. Our post would not be, oh, I would like to thank Chief Dale. We have, he has been here, he has been supportive throughout the whole process and even took the time out of his busy schedule to come and uh, introduce himself to us. I would also like to thank Firefighter Allie and Ms. Egbert for being a part of the planning, encouraging us and giving us great input along the way. Thank you for allowing us some time to speak at your meeting. 
Thank you. Thank each and every one of you for being pioneers in this brand new capacity of our fire department. Um, we are thrilled to see you here, and your outfits look really cool. <laughs> so tomorrow night, they will be badge, and after that, they'll start doing a lot more, be melt more visible. By the end, or as soon as we can, this post could have as many as 30 uh, youth within our community. And I think you have um, helped us move forward, and again, Council Members Mendenhall and Adams, you can certainly <coughs> push me, nudge me, gave me suggestions, where you want to call it, but... I think that, um, I hope that we've met your expectations across the city and I hope we continue to do so. So thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Dale. You have embraced that challenge that we issued um, in a way that I think is so remarkable. And across the nation, you have set a precedence in a very short amount of time for a department that is, uh, was quite standard to becoming quite exceptional in, um, in your adoption of uh, diversity and the priority of that in your fire department. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. You've done a fantastic job in bringing, in elevating um, diversity in this department and set a really high bar for the future. So I want to thank you. And could we give another round of applause, guys? <laughs> Can we get a can we get a group shot up here? We don't usually take so many photos at a council meeting, but we also don't have the fire department here most of the time. Madam Chair, I just want to say that to both you and Lisa, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, we're moving on to section five of our agenda and I'll look for uh, an approval of some minutes. Madam Chair, we move the, uh, that we approve the minutes of Tuesday, September 6th, Tuesday, September 13th. Second. There's a motion by Councilmember Penfold and a second by Councilmember Kitchen. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that motion passes. <clears throat> Section B of public hearings uh, is that we're now into that portion of our meeting. We have a few opportunities for public comment tonight. I'll call people up here based on the comment cards that have been turned in. Uh, I'll call you up two at a time. First person, please come up. Second person, please be ready to come up following. And our comment time again is limited to two minutes. Thank you for being respectful of other people's time. And I don't have any comment cards up here just yet. Our first two public hearings, item B1 and B2, are related to the Lincoln Elementary School rezone. Item B1 is a public hearing regarding the Lincoln Elementary School rezone and map amendment. Is there anyone that wishes to speak to this particular item? Okay. Then I'll look for a motion. Madam Chair, I move that we close the public hearing and defer action to a future date. I have a motion by Councilmember Penfold and a second by Councilmember Luke. Is there any discussion to that motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? That motion passes. The item, the second item, B2, is regarding the Lincoln Elementary School Alley vacation. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to this item? Raise your hand if so. Okay, I'll look for a motion. Madam Chair, I move that we close this public hearing and defer action to a future date. And a second. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Penfold and a second by Councilmember Kitchen. Is there any discussion to that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. Item B3 <coughs> is a public hearing regarding 1117 East South Temple Rezone and Master Plan Amendment. I have a few uh, people who'd like to comment. We'll start with Luke Mushal followed by Cindy Cromer. Mughal, I'm sorry if that's a G, not an H, please correct me. It's a G, thank you. Will you pull that mic up like a yes. rock star? Is this thank better? you. That's everyone hear me okay? A little louder would be great. How's this? That's better. Thanks. Okay, maybe it should <laughs> um, I'm here on behalf of my father and our property on South Temple. I just wanted to say I'm really appreciative. I thank you for holding this hearing to consider that. Um, this, okay. Um, thank you for holding this hearing to consider that. Um, I just wanted to say some things you probably already know. We've already, we've had a community council and we've met um, and addressed all, the, all of the needs there. Um, we're breaking new ground, so we're going to be adding value to the to the community. Um, we're meeting a setback president set by our neighbor on the west side, um, and we also have a developmental agreement for no commercial use. Um, so that's all I wanted to say, and I really appreciate you considering this rezoning. Thank you, Mr. Mughal. I'm sorry I, I should have caught that one. Uh, Cindy Cromer will address us next, followed by Vincent Chang. Uh, my name is Cindy Cromer. I've been concerned about development agreements for at least the last three years. This summer, however, I realized there are three pending in the city's historic districts, including the one you're considering tonight. I made a grammar request, which it turns out I couldn't do technically because the city didn't have a record of the development agreements it had entered into, and it's a government records request. But the recorder's office was very helpful and quickly generated the list that you have as a handout tonight. The proposed development agreements and historic districts are highlighted in yellow. The problem with the proposed development agreement is that it undoes the very purpose of the RMU 35 by restricting commercial uses, the intent of the zone. Beyond that, as I have whined before, it only takes four votes to undo the development agreement. So in addition to prohibiting the intended use, this development agreement would only need four votes to undo what it was supposed to prohibit. And beyond that, this development agreement applies to property in an historic district, one of the great boulevards in America. Earlier this year, the Landmarks Commission made it clear that the setbacks are critical on South Temple. Here's the message you send to the Landmarks Commission regarding setbacks with the proposed zone. The front yard setback can be five feet instead of 20 feet. The side yard setbacks can be zero instead of 10 feet. And the height can exceed 35 feet specified in both zones through the CBSDR process. You are opening a can of worms, and the Landmarks Commission will be blamed for the results. Also, as I've pointed out, at no time this year has anyone consulted with the Landmarks Commission about this proposed rezoning. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Cromer. Vincent Chang, followed by Mike Marone. Thank you. Uh, can you all hear me okay? Um, my family and I, we live um, on Q Street and South Temple, right around the corner from the proposed uh, new building. Uh, we've been living there for 17 years in an old uh, Victorian house. I'm a professor at the University of Utah. And it's a very nice, quiet, residential neighborhood with mostly uh, uh, single family old Victorian houses with a couple of uh, uh, smallish apartment buildings. At that corner right now, uh, Q Street and South Temple, on one side is the Commodore apartment building, and on the other, side of that corner is the, um, the town club, the, uh, the, uh, um, the ladies um, uh, social uh, club. Between those two, the parking on this, uh, uh, on Q Street and on South Temple gets pretty crowded. Some days uh, the town club has two events during the, uh, each day, lunch and dinner, 
it's pretty hard to find parking as it is some, uh, some days. The proposed building is in a very narrow um, lot, so I'm just concerned that um, uh, if it goes through, not only will parking become pretty impossible in the neighborhood, but it will also um, really change the nature of, of that particular se uh, section of the avenues. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jane. Mike Marone, followed by Scott Cruz. I, I believe that this is a really nice project for that area. It brings a newer project that's going to be more inefficient and also safe. I had a daughter that went to the U. She works up at the U Hospital right now. And she always used to ask me, how come there's no newer properties with secure underground parking? Because she always didn't feel very safe in the building she lived in. I have two sons at the U right now, and they've expressed the same concern. And I think this is a good project that will help the U and the university extensively. Thank you. Thank you. Scott Cruz, followed by Susan Sands Sundstrom. Hi, council members. My name is Scott Cruz, and I manage the Commodore Apartments next to the parcel, and I really didn't know very much about what's going on over there. I would love to see progress, but I, at the same time, have tried to make a lot of progress in that area, and I know that um, in working with the historic district, there are a lot of restrictions, and if we, we've we not been able to upgrade our windows or, or change our landscaping and without, <coughs> without because of historic things, and I don't uh, know what something like this will do next to a building that can't be upgraded, at least on the outside and where they're trying to keep historic appeal and then they put something new in. Also, we have 16 apartments, and, and we do run into the same thing that uh, Ben's, who I met tonight, spoke about, which is restricted parking. And I think they're just requiring one stall per unit here. So even though it's underground and they're providing one or 1 1.2 stalls per unit, it's, it's fairly restricted. So, you know, I'm, I'm in favor of it, but I also worry that the height can be impeding because it's so close to our building, which is unreinforced masonry. And if it, if there was an earthquake or something similar like like that, it could be dangerous to have. I, I don't know what the setbacks are. I don't know any of these things. I, I didn't hear about a community council, but anyway, um, I know it would. I know a lot of the residents that live next door and would be have to look out their windows at this, don't know what's going on, and I would like to, I just wanted to come and learn some more. So I think we're still early, early in the progress process, but those are some of my initial thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. Susan Sundstrom, followed by Larry Foote. My name is Susan Sundstrom. I'm the operations manager for the property at 1127 East and South Temple, which is the historic mansion next to the proposed lot that they want to develop. Uh, we would like to see the development of that property. It's been many, many years that it's left full of weeds and the Commodore allows animals and the dogs roam there and fill the lot with uh, dog waste. <laughs> it gets very strong in the summertime, so the tenants that live in our building have to smell that. In addition, we would like to be able to share a parking driveway uh, with the proposed developer so that we can widen our driveway, widen his driveway, and also share in snow plow, snow removal, and dumpster. So we're in favor of the proposed development to clean the neighborhood up and not have that be just an empty lot that's been there for decades. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sundstrom. Larry Foote is the final card that I have. If anyone else wishes to speak, please raise your hand and we'll get a card to you so you can come up. I'm the owner of the property at 1127, which is just east of uh, the vacant lot. 
Now that vacant lot I know has been vacant for 40 years, and it's a shame that it's sit that long and nothing's been done with it. Uh, it's close to the university. I graduated from the university, and it's nice to be able to walk to school, and that give additional housing for people uh, to uh, maintain close to the university. And uh, you've allowed some of these 100-unit buildings jammed in between some of the other buildings and four stories high. So a small unit in there with, with several units would be nothing compared to the stuff you've already allowed. As long as structurally it would fit in between the two and, and even South Temple is a special street, so I think the architect should reflect the South Temple. Uh, we're gonna share the driveway so it's gonna be more convenient for everybody coming and going and share the, uh, the garbage pickup and share the snow removal. And uh, so I think it, it, I think it would work out well rather than letting it just sit forever as a vacant lot. So I really approve it, as long as it's a reasonable size. Thank you, Mr. Foote. That's the last comment card I have. Raise your hand if anyone else wishes to speak on item number three of our public hearings tonight. Okay, seeing none. Madam Chair, I move that we close this public hearing and defer action to a future date. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Penfold with a second by Councilmember Luke. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. We're now at item C, potential acts, action items. Our first item is regarding an ordinance amending various sections of Title 21A zoning pertaining to attached garage regulations in residential zoning districts. I'll look for a motion. <laughs> Madam Chair, uh, I move that the council adopt an ordinance amending the city's zoning ordinance pertaining to attached garage regulations in residential zoning districts. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Penfold again and a second by Councilmember Johnston. Is there any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. Our second potential item is regarding 854 West Hoyt Place rezone. I'll look for a motion. Madam Chair, I move that the council adopt an ordinance amending the zoning map for properties related to the 854 West Hoyt Place zoning map amendment from R1 5000 and R1 7000 to SR3. I have a motion by Council Member Penfold with a second by Council Member Luke. Is there any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Nay. That motion passes with me as the only nay. We're moving on to items C3 and C4. They're related to the 800 West and 800 North rezone. Item C3 is a text amendment to allow community recreation centers in RMF 35 residential multifamily low density. I'll look for a motion on this. Madam Chair, I move the council adopt an ordinance amending city code to allow community recreation centers as conditional uses in the RMF 35 moderate density multifamily residential district. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Johnston with a second by Councilmember Luke. Is there any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion passes unanimously. And item C4 is a proposal to close a portion of 800 West north of a terminating cul-de-sac at approximately 800 North. Madam Chair, I move the council adopt an ordinance closing por a portion of 800 North Street north of a terminating cul-de-sac at approximately 800 West. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Johnston with a second by Council Member Luke. Any discussion? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that motion passes. Next item, C5, is for a budget amendment number one of fiscal year 2016-17. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, I would like to make a motion and also offer a, a short preamble, uh, which I will explain. I'd please go ahead, Thank Council you. Member Luke. Uh, I move that the Council adopt an ordinance amending the final budget of Salt Lake City, including the employment staffing document for fiscal year 2016-17, as outlined in the transmittal for budget amendment number one. And I also move that we consider the following Council added item. 
Um, in making this motion, the council wishes to express its concerns about the placement and size of the new homeless resource centers in the city. Since site selection is a mayoral decision, the council has requested the mayor announce sites for the facilities by o October 10th in order to allow time for public engagement before any state legislative deadline. In addition, the council has asked the mayor's office in Salt Lake County to submit a plan by November 1st for how they will identify and rectify potential negative neighborhood impacts, including determining the resources that will be needed. The council also has identified needed changes in city land use ordinance intended to help minimize potential impact. The council, in striving to reach a balance of needs as we protect our neighborhoods and care for those in need, it should be clear that we are driven by compassion as we seek short and long-term solutions. So, additionally, council members have called for a plan from the mayor in preparation for how the city will address emergency services this winter and respond to the crisis conditions along 500 West and the Rio Grande Pioneer Park area. I move that the council allocate uh, $1,031,000 from the surplus land account for the administration to use for property acquisitions and related expenses with these understandings in mind. That the city, with support and endorsement of Salt Lake County, will request reimbursement from the state, that the location or facility comply with all city zoning standards and regulations, that the location or facility be compatible with adjoining land uses, including a 250 cap on the number of beds, a prohibition of overflow accommodations, addressing criteria established through the Homeless Site Selection Commission process and the administration, including geographic criteria, other buffers, and environmental justice buffers as referenced in a September 9, 2016 Salt Lake City Council staff report. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Luke and a second by Councilmember Kitchen, is there any other discussion to this motion? It was actually Councilmember Penfold. That oh, okay. Councilmember Penfold gave a second. I mean, you beat me to it. Any discussion besides who was the second? Really? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. We're now on to section D of our agenda. Our, we could not have any questions of the mayor from the council because there's no one here tonight. And we're now on to item D2, which is where we take general comments from anybody in the audience who'd like to give us some comments on whatever it is that you want to chat about tonight. We'll call people based on these cards. Just like with the public hearings, I'll call you two at a time. First person, please come up. Second person, be ready to follow. Two minutes, please be respectful and all that. We're going to start with Stephen Hunt, and we will f be followed by Marilyn Oblon. Marilyn, I'm sorry if I said your last name wrong. Yes, council members, I'd like to speak regarding the uh, turnout at the Whittier School. Right now, there's a, a really congestion there, when, especially when buses park there to pick up and drop off students. There's there's very little room for traffic to get around and endangers the students that are crossing. There's also another street that comes in at a right angle at that school, which complicates the situation even further. So I'd like to uh, recommend that uh, funds be found to be able to uh, <coughs> support this project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Marilyn, followed by Jeff Baer. Marilyn, will you say your last name for us, please? And pull that mic down so that we can hear you. Thank I'd like to speak for the uh, bus relocation loading unloading project. Uh, it is much needed for the school for the safety of the children. We're sure it will save lives in the future. It's relatively low cost and future generations will thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Baer next followed by Jeff Baer. I have two comment cards for Jeff Baer. Is that allowed, Cindy? Um, I have two separate comments, but Rebecca, I, I, Rebecca, I, appreciate I think, would that. be better to follow after me okay. since you speak twice. And Marilyn's last name is Oblad. Thank you. Um, I'm also here from Liberty Wells Community Council. Um, we brought a few folks down to discuss the bus turnout at Whittier. As has been mentioned, it's a very hazardous situation. The buses stop in the street to let the kids on and off, and it's an accident waiting to happen. Unfortunately, um, it was, we wrote a grant, or CIP grant, that was not funded. 
it passed the design review and everything else, and we just would like to request that some funds be found to protect the kids and install the bus turnout. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bear. We will defer to Rebecca Huber, our next card, followed by DeWitt Smith. Hi, I'm Rebecca Huber, and I'm here on, Liberty, on behalf of the Liberty Wells Community Council. Um, I just want to reiterate what has already been said, that, uh, that this is a very big issue for our community and for the school, for the children, um, for families, as well as people who are traveling along the street there, bicyclists and other vehicles. So if you could consider this, it would be very important. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Huber. DeWitt Smith, followed by Bernie Bernard Hart. Council, thank you uh, for uh, attending the Liberty Wells Community Council meeting. Um, <laughs> we have brought a number of people here to speak in support of this particular project, which I submitted um, for funding. 100% of this project is on city property, and so we can't privately fund it. We don't have the capability to widen the street and provide the safety margin we really need for the students at that elementary school. Um, we're joined by Chris Herman, Marjorie Parker, or excuse me, Marjorie Parker, the Whittier School principal, Jason Olson of the public schools, Paul Schulte of public schools who promised to view the situation uh, firsthand and comment, commented on it. Why wouldn't we do this project? Faith Martinez, the school crossing guard supervisor, members of the board of the Liberty Wells Community Council, George Otto of the city engineering, Jason Draper of city public utilities, Michael Berry of the City Transportation Department, Ken Brown of SLC Zoning. We met with the DRT and there was unanimous support for this project. Uh, why it wasn't funded, I don't know. But we do request funding from you. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Bernard Hart is the final card that I have. If anyone else wishes to address us in this part of our meeting, raise your hand, we'll get you a card. Mr. Hart. Uh, Bernie Hart, I'm uh, happy to see you're spending so much time uh, looking at the homeless issue. Uh, uh, I, Councilwoman Adams, I did run across two ladies this week that were looking for a place to pitch their tent and without much success. So I thought of you when that happened. Without the legis, I don't know where, how the legislature is considering this issue by uh, solving the homeless problem by building two facilities in Salt Lake when they won't take action on a minimum wage that will sustain the people that are uh, in, in housing and trying to maintain their housing and working three jobs and dealing with depression or whatever they're dealing with. That's only one issue that affords, that contributes to it. Uh, affordable housing, which I know you're looking at, uh, there's no money for that. I've talked to the person on, on the city staff that's dealing with it. I asked them what the number one issue was and it's lack of funding. Uh, so without affordable housing, uh, I don't know how, how you're going to transition and, and affordable health care, how you're going to possibly transition people out of homelessness into housing and stable housing and stable conditions. This sort of leads to the idea that these, these facilities are not transitional places but permanent type facilities that will be forever in our neighborhoods and increasing in size because the the state is unable to fund or will, is unwilling to fund the, the processes that need, we need to get people out of homelessness on a permanent basis. So the homeless population will continue to increase and you will be, be continue to ask every five years to build a new facility in a new neighbor, neighborhood that's gonna be dealing with the issue. So unless you can get the state or the community in general to look at the problem in a comprehensive way, we're going to revisit this issue every few years as the population of homelessness in the city increases rather than decreases, which is your intent of all this housing and the transitional stuff. Time. So thank you very much. Thank you, Thanks Mr. Hart. for your efforts. Yep, bye-bye. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Madam Mr. Chair. Bear? Madam Chair, may we make a clarification about the CIP process so that we're clear that the allocations haven't been made yet, decisions haven't been made, there have been recommendations. And so it's still under process um, from the board to the mayor and then to the city council. So we're still in the middle of our process about deliberating and deciding on those issues. So nothing's been allocated yet, but recommendations have been made. 
my understanding was they were making a request that we find the money in the CIP process, but Mr. Bear, are, are it, we're okay to take double comments tonight in the general comment section. Cindy, do you know? No. Or not? I'm sorry, no. I guess you only get two minutes total. I would be happy to talk with you in just a moment because we're almost finished with our May I suggest that that we all see comments in writing and that that's a really good option. And we can um, share that with you. Because we do see that and we can share that as well. Yes, can we get a comment card over to Mr. Bear in case he'd like to do that? Is there anyone else who wishes to speak tonight? All right, then we're moving on to section G, our consent portion of the agenda. I'll look for a motion. Madam Actually, Chair, before, Madam Chair, before we, move we do to that. You, uh, you did this last week, too, that you we really want to get done, F. I think. I'm sorry. Unfinished <laughs> business. I did that, yeah. <laughs> Let me get over there. That's okay. I, I understand. I just stuck my pages together. <laughs> Item E, there's no new business today. F, we have unfinished business. Madam Chair. Council Member Luke. I move that the council adopt the 2016 Economic Development Policy Statement, which I will now read. Uh, the Salt Lake City Council, uh, let's see, the Salt Lake City Council's 2016 Economic Development Policy Statement. The council wishes to foster a robust, sustainable, and diverse economy in Salt Lake City through A, maintaining Salt Lake City's position as Utah's preeminent economic center and one of the most important in the Intermountain West, B, cultivating a qualities that contribute to Salt Lake City's vibrancy and economic health, including a diverse population, identifiable neighborhoods, neighborhood and business districts, thriving arts and culture, affordable housing, transportation options, particularly transit, and alternative, alternative modes, and access to natural outdoor environments that is unmatched by other urban areas. C, promoting economic and educational opportunities that target populations in need, D, increasing the skills of the city's workforce. E, encouraging business projects that meet the city's vision, create high quality jobs and are located to maximize the city's existing infrastructure, transit options and housing. F, working collaboratively with other levels of government and with non-governmental organizations to increase the effectiveness and efficacy of our efforts. G, fostering population growth by increasing density where appropriate. H, expanding the city's tax base so that funding for public infrastructure and services can keep pace with demand. And I, tracking city progress in economic development, identifying successes and areas needing improvement. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Luke and a second by Council Member Kitchen. Any discussion to this lengthy motion? Madam Chair, I only want to say that I'm really thrilled that we're uh, taking this action. It's been uh, a lot of work, but I am really pleased with the result. Anyone else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. Now we're going to move on to G, but before we get to the consent portion, um, I want to recognize Peter Bloomberg. Hey, you're just walking out. Come on back in. I know, you haven't been made uh, privy to your spot on our agendas and we're, we apologize for that. Uh, Peter Bloomberg is our new library director. Thank you for being with us tonight. We, I understand that you um, weren't aware of your spot on our six o'clock agenda. So um, I wanna welcome you tonight. And do I need to, is that a part of our consent on here? It's not, no. I just wanted to acknowledge Thank that he you. was here to support his library appointment, but didn't oh. know that it was earlier, so. Well, thank you for being with us. It's quite all right. You didn't, you didn't throw a wrench into uh, anything, um, but we I'm were I'm about to, to show you it. how all right it is. I move that we adopt the consent Second. agenda, including the library appointment. <laughs> I have a motion by Councilmember Penfold and a second by Councilmember Luke. Any discussion to the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And just like that, it's done. The motion passes. And you are free to be the director of the library. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Is that the end, folks? I gotta flip to a few pages. 
And I believe that's the end of our meeting. Thanks for being with us tonight.